Welcome back to the Piney Woods Homestead, y'all. I don't always carry a hog on my shoulder, but when I do, I'm getting ready to process it. Is that too corny? A little bit. <laughs> Guys, we've showed you hog press processing before. If you'll go back about March, there's a good video on it. But what we're going to do today is Lisa and I are going to get this hog processing. It's this is all half of it, and it's heavy. Then we're going to show you the end result, guys. Thanks for stopping in. Hit that old like and subscribe if you hadn't. If you have, as always, we appreciate you guys. I'm going to put this pig down. All right, y'all, we're back. It's day two. It's actually, yeah, it's day, this would be day three. It's technically day three. Because yeah. we dispatched and cleaned the hog. Saturday. Saturday. Evening. Yeah, Saturday evening. We processed the pig yesterday. And today, we're just showing off what we've got done. So Lisa's going to kind of go through a couple of things real quick um, that she has tallied up from this pig that we have butchered and processed. And just to give people kind of an idea of what you're looking at if you get a whole hog. Um, if you decide to raise one yourself or if you decide to buy a whole hog from another grower. Um, but this ended up being, I think we, we didn't weigh him. No, I, you know, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, we don't weigh every single one. We, we've raised enough hogs now that we can look at them and tell about what their live weight is on the hoof while they're still out there living and breathing. Yeah. And so we know that this hog was somewhere between 225 and 250 pounds live weight. And you might say 25 pounds, that's a big difference. But y'all, that's, that's pretty good rule of thumb when you're judging a large animal. Um, but it's not always easy to get those scales out. And so it's not something we did this time. We'll, we'll try to weigh the next one, but it's a good, good size hog, y'all. It's harder for just the two of us to weigh it. So It's a job. Carolina Hill Country comes and helps with the next one. It'll definitely get, It'll get weighed. Away. Yeah. Um, but this ended up being a total of, once broke down, packaged, 128 pounds worth of meat. Right here, 128 yeah. pounds on the table. And that involves, you know, multiple packs of pork chops. We got the ribs, um, a lot of roasts. Y'all, I actually, <clears throat> we only got one good set of baby backs. Ooh. Yeah. Because doing this by yourself at home is not as efficient as in a commercial butcher shop. And so we use a sawzall with a 10 inch blade to cut that hog in half. And, Lisa held it, held the hog steady, and I do my best to cut a straight line. Sometimes you get off, but still, it wasn't too bad. Um, it was actually pretty good getting it cut, and and so we still got the ribs. Just one side is not very pretty. Yeah, but they'll still taste good. They'll still taste good. <laughs> so that's the main thing. Um, and then you know, lots of lots of ham roast, shoulder roast. Um, and y'all, we. We don't cut all large roasts no. like you see right here. That's a picnic. And the reason we don't is because we're a small family. And so we don't need a five pound roast for every meal. Right. So we will we will break down shoulders and hams to get us about anywhere from a, sometimes just a pound if it's just going to be the two of us. A little bit more if it's going to be the three of us. And even bigger if we want to eat on it for several days. Well, and we generally keep a couple out larger if we're gonna have you know just for in case we want to have family over right or anything like that um and then our sausages we did half and half this time with the southern breakfast sausage and the hot italian and how many pounds 12 pounds of each yeah we did 12 pounds of southern and 12 pounds of italian and then we did something different this time we did some bratwurst, and we did, we, we wanted to see how we liked the flavor of them, so we only did five pounds of garlic and onion, and five pounds of, the seasoning is called blue ribbon, which is just basically a traditional bratwurst flavor. And you know, growing up in the South, I don't know if it's got to do with the South or not, but we've never really eaten brats that I can recall. I've had them one time in my life, and it was a... Uh, major store brand and i was like i don't really like that but we actually had one of them bust we were using my great grandfather's 
uh, old press yesterday and putting natural collagen casings on it. Lisa was cranking and as I was doing the sausage and I got a little too tight and I busted <laughs> one. So we actually fried that up last night and I don't tell you what. It was really good. Excellent. Yeah. And that so, was the blue ribbon. No. Well, yeah, that was the that blue was ribbon. The blue ribbon. Yeah. We'll, we will be making brats from now on after that, and I can't wait to throw some on the grill. Yeah. And so we, um, again, this was 128 pounds worth of meat, and you're really good at keeping up with the prices of market for this type of product, so yes. I'll let you kind of explain that. Y'all, uh, here in North Carolina, and probably in every state, every month, the... I guess it's the Department of Agriculture. I think I'm correct on that. They keep up with what the market prices are for pasture-raised pork. I'm not talking about your commercial hogs. I'm not talking about um, stuff raised on concrete. I'm talking about stuff raised on dirt. And that's what we do. We raise it on dirt and we raise a heritage breed, which is unlike really most people in our area. Some people, will they'll just go get um, mixed up hogs, y'all. And they'll raise them, call them pasture raised, and they'll try to get a premium for them. We're raising a Hereford, which is crossed up between three pigs, three heritage breed hogs. It's um, Duroc, Poland China, and I believe Chester White. And those are all heritage breeds. And we end up with a vigorous, deeply marbled, dark yeah. meat pork. That and it is, and it is a darker meat, so people that are used to the to a white pork. To a white pork, it does look, um, it and, does look different. And now your loins, I don't know if you can tell the in the camera are, with yeah. the frost, but they are darker. Yeah. They'll cook up lighter. But in like the shoulder roast, you know. Yeah, it's dark. It's, it's, it's almost looks like beef. Yeah. And it just has full flavor. But anyways, back to the keeping up with prices. I took December's prices 2022 and I did the average. I didn't do the low end or the high end on prices. And based off of all the cuts that you see on the table here, 128 pounds, what did that total come up to? Well, you went through and actually broke it down per type of yeah, cut. Yeah, per cut, per pound, per what, pound and what all that. the state said, what the right. prices were. And so the total was $1,197.82. So 1200 bucks right. sitting on the table, y'all. If we had to go out and purchase it from a legit grower, legit grower, y'all, somebody that's raising a heritage, truly heritage breed hog and putting it in the cuts that we have here on the table. That's, that's what you're looking at. And so to us, that's an extremely great value. And that's not an inflation of the value either, y'all. This is legit. This is a real deal. And this is one of the reasons that we, we live this way, y'all. We get the cuts that we want, not just a checklist cut from a butcher or processor. We can put as much fat into our sausages as we want. And y'all, we did something different this time. We went with a high fat content sausage. There was about a half to three quarter inch fat cap on our pigs. And that's what we want. Gets, keeps them good and healthy. And instead of making lard, we put that additional fat into our sausage because we've been making lean sausage now Very for lean. years. Yeah. Extremely lean. You yeah. got to add olive oil in the pan when you cook it. And so I'm excited about this high fat sausage. And, and one thing you did do different with the sausage as well is this is whole hog sausage. Oh yeah. Usually so. we just take some trimmings plus majority ham. Mm -hmm. This time I actually made sure that I took trimmings from every part of this hog from the head all the way to the tail. And so it's whole hog sausage. And high fat. And so and when I say high fat, there's probably 30% fat in there. At least. A minimum 30%. So you're going to have grease in the pan when you get done cooking this sausage. It's not going to stick and it's going to be full of flavor. Yeah. And one thing that's not actually out here, we have 15 pounds of bacon oh, in yeah. here in the yeah. refrigerator. Yeah. Beautiful so. bacon. Y'all, I tried something different this time. Never going to do it again. Um, usually... We skin hogs, and that involves a skinning cradle that I built years ago. We put, put the hog on there, get him skinned down around the hams, and then we pick him up, hook a winch to that hide, and pull. That works great. This year I thought, I'm going to try something I saw. 
skinning and strips. Never again. I'll never, <laughs> never ever, again. ever do that again. And honestly, I, I had said a while back when we scalded the barbecue pig, I don't know which is better. Scalding's better. But scalding definitely takes more than just me and you. Uh, I mean, scalding's we did. hard, y'all. <laughs> what you know, she's a hundred pounds <laughs> ten maybe. She's she's pretty tiny. I'm two hundred and thirty, six foot one. A little shorter right now because I got crocs on. My feet are getting cold, but y'all, it's a job, and um, about four people are needed for scalding. But I like it better. Plus, you end up with that skin that you can turn into pork rinds. Yeah. You lose that when you skin a hog, and you you do lose a little bit of the fat when you're skinning. You it lose well, a little so. bit, and I goofed up a little bit because I skin it in strips, and I decided yeah. to get back to the old method. By the time I done that, I'd lost some fat, but. No big deal in the long run. We didn't lose much. Kind of kind of um, jacked up the bacon a little bit, up, but it's going to be fine. But, still yeah. going to be good bacon. We still got 15 pounds of bacon. So. Yeah, so we're happy about that. <laughs> and we've that. been out of bacon for... We haven't had bacon good, here in the house. A good bit. Other than some my dad gave us. Yeah, we got a pack of your dad. For months. Yeah. Um, so we're glad to have some bacon in the cure. We'll smoke again and put on the slicer and homestead bacon, y'all. Yeah. And it's the best bacon I've ever had. It really is. Really, it's the best I've ever had. And I'm not just saying that because we, no. we've we raised them. Because I'm not normally a huge bacon fan. I know, kind of out of the norm for most people. But I actually love this bacon. And it's, I think, between the quality of the meat and... And the cure we and use. And the cure we use and just a light smoke that you do yeah. on it makes, it makes a world of difference. It does. But y'all, beautiful high fat content sausage here. Southern blend, we put extra sage, extra red pepper. A hot Italian because it makes the best spaghetti and pizza you've ever had. We're just very, very grateful that the Lord allowed us to have a good year yeah. with raising hogs. And we've still got one more down there to process. And we'll see if old Carolina Hill Country can get out here and help with that. And before I forget it, shout outs. Uh -huh. Told you it'd be about yes. a week, y'all. That's the way it rolls around here. For those people that guessed within two on the two by fours, here you are Dean Barr, Hank Hill, Joe Ziegler, and Richie Frizzell. I believe I pronounced that right, or Frizzell. Frizzell, I think. Everybody guessed within two. I actually had, here I'm counting with my finger. <laughs> I actually had 11 perfect dress store bought dimension two by fours. And you're looking at a couple of them if you can see them underneath this table here. but Shout out to you guys. Appreciate y'all commenting on that. But, I, I, you know, as I told you, um, Judy's was my favorite because she said, oh, yeah. not really sure, but not enough. Probably not <laughs> enough. Probably not yeah, enough. Yeah, and you're right, Judy. Not enough. But, guys, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, I'll try to get you a close-up of the table here and what's on it. It's hard living this way, y'all. It is not easy. That's why your next-door neighbors aren't doing it. Maybe some of you are. But that's why most people aren't doing it. Um, it's going to take us a couple of days to recover from all this. Us to recover um, and the house to recover. <laughs> especially when, you, for me, uh, yeah. I'm, you know, a year, uh, a little over a year ago, I could have done this, been up six o'clock in the morning the next day going at it. But now it takes me a little bit of time to recover. That's fine. It's part of getting older too. But you did do the, <clears throat> the you did do a, a really better job this time recovery and yeah and overall the, yeah. the amount of time that took you did the best this time that you've done i have since the best time sick. yeah so very grateful for that lord's been good to us guys have a good day a great week we'll show you a close-up real quick here to tell into the, the video if you have any questions or comments drop them below and guys be courteous once in a while i actually have to nuke people because <laughs> For some reason, they want to be jerks, and I don't get it, but we're all about loving each other around here, y'all, and helping each other, so thanks, guys, for sticking around with us. Honeywoods Homestead, hit that like and subscribe, and if you had not subscribed, we hope you will. Y'all have a good day.